On the last episode of Hops and Gnarly Brewing, I made another 10 gallon batch on my new Blickman Brew Easy and started a Solera project in this half barrel fooder. But my plan has never been to abandon my smaller systems. In fact, I'm hoping I can use some of the new components that came with the Brew Easy to upgrade my existing setup. First, I think it's time to start running the Anvil Foundry on 240 volt power. To make this happen, I'm replacing the female end on this 30 amp extension cord with a standard connection that will accept the male end on the Anvil Foundry. I saw this tip on another video and it's a great way to avoid cutting the plug off of your Anvil Foundry. That said, if you choose to do something similar, you do so at your own risk. I'm also hoping to use the auto sparge from the Brew Easy on the Anvil Foundry. This will eliminate the possibility of the grain basket overflowing into the kettle and make sparging super easy. I replaced the float arm with a shorter piece of threaded rod and I'm mounting it to a thin piece of wood which will be held in place by a really strong magnet that for now I've just temporarily attached. And while I've been brewing a ton of beer recently, none of it will be ready anytime soon. So. This week, I'm breaking in these new upgrades by making a petite saison that will be a welcome addition to the kegerator. In my experience, petite is a loose term used to describe beers that are lower in alcohol than a typical example in the same style. So a petite saison is just a saison that has a lower ABV than you'd expect kind of like a session beer. I'm aiming for a 4.5% ABV beer that's full of that funky, spicy, Saison yeast character. After primary fermentation is complete, I'm planning to add some kind of stone fruit, maybe apricots, if I can track down a few pounds at a reasonable price. And while this example from Crooked Save Artisan Ales is sour, I won't be adding any souring bacteria to this batch. Now, let's make some beer. For this beer, I'm using some local spring water and I'm adjusting the water profile using gypsum, calcium chloride, and epsom salt. I'm shooting for a balanced water profile with about 75 parts per million sulfate and 60 parts per million chloride. While this step isn't necessarily required to make good beer, it definitely helps, especially if you want to make something great. Today, I'm using some Colorado malted grains from Proximity Malts. The recipe includes 80% pilsen, 15% white wheat, and 5% dextrin. Let's get it going. I'll keep mashing this in until everything is nice and saturated and holding steady at our target mash temperature of 152 degrees Fahrenheit or about 67 degrees Celsius. Then I'll let the mash bed settle for a few minutes before installing the auto sparge and starting the recirculation. Okay, we've been mashing for over an hour now and the auto sparge has been regulating the recirculation flow perfectly. Time to yank these grains and get our boil started. Man, I'm not sparging today, but I can't wait to try it out with this new setup. 
I'm really happy with how slowly this mash basket is draining after all that recirculation. Pretty stoked to see my efficiency with this batch. With the basket up and out of the wort, it's time for our first wort hop addition. Here's seven grams of HBC472, which should provide about 15 IBUs. We've been boiling this wort for 45 minutes now and it's time for the next hop addition. Here's 7 more grams of HBC 472. It's also time to start sanitizing the chiller. 15 minutes to go. That's 15 minutes and it's time for a quick whirlpool. After dropping the temperature to 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 71 degrees Celsius, I'm adding 14 grams of HBC 472. Now I'll just let this spin for 30 minutes. And just like that, it's time to chill this wort down and get ready for fermentation. As we get close to pitching temperature, I'm oxygenating the wort with pure oxygen using an inline diffusion stone from Blickman Engineering. Next stop for this petite saison is this three gallon glass carboy. Let me get this transferred and we'll get things set up inside for primary fermentation. We ended up with just over two and a half gallons in the fermenter and an original gravity of 1048, which was just over my estimation. That could mean the auto sparge improved my efficiency, but I'll wait to see what happens in the next batch before I update my settings in Beersmith. For this beer, I'm going with Imperial Rustic and I'll be fermenting at room temperature. In addition to the belgian -y phenols you'd expect from a Saison yeast, this one is said to produce some fruity aromas that should pair pretty well with the fruit I'm going to add in a couple weeks. More to come. This episode of Hops Gnarly Brewing was made possible by these awesome partners. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon. Thank you.